You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today we are looking at week 11 in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Let's get to it. To it. Let's get to it indeed. Of course, we are past the Christmas point of the season for the NBA. So now onto the New Year's portion. The schedule is still a little bit wonky, still a little bit different to what we normally see. We've got six games coming up on Monday, seven games on Tuesday, and then weirdly Wednesday, which is normally the big day in the NBA. But of course, because it's New Year's Day, we only have the four games. Nine on Thursday, probably the biggest Thursday we'll have. Six on Friday, 11 on Saturday, and five on Sunday. So there are some key streaming target days there as well. We'll get into that in a second. Let's just have a look at the games the teams play. Majority of teams play three games this week. There are three teams playing two games, the Philadelphia 76ers, the New Orleans Pelicans, and the Houston Rockets. The Rockets have both of those games at home, while the Sixers and the Pelicans both play their games on the road. And the teams that have four games, the Wolves, the Blazers, the Heat, the Clippers, the Suns, Magic, Cavs, Pistons, and Wizards. All of those teams have four games this week. The Wizards, all four at home. The Pistons, all four on the road. And the Timberwolves, in terms of ease, have the best uh, best schedule this week. They take on the Nets. They take on the Bucks, the Warriors, and the Cavs. And the Warriors and the Cavs at the end there really do give an overall boost to their total fantasy value. When we're looking to stream this week, Monday, Tuesday, great days there with six and seven games. Wednesday as well with uh, four games, so really early streaming happening this week. Weirdly, Thursday is not a streaming day with nine games on. It could be. It depends on your roster, but it's not a definite target date. Uh, Saturday with 11 is probably one we don't look at either. We look at Friday and Sunday. So realistically, we've got five streaming days. Maybe we can squeeze six in there. So it's going to require a bit of finagling to get those two for ones in to try and make the most of your um, make the most of your acquisitions for the week. So in terms of quality games, and if you don't know what a quality game is, it is a game in the NBA schedule where there are lower amounts of games, meaning that you are most likely not to have a full fantasy roster. So you don't have to make sit start decisions for that day. And if you stream someone in, you actually have an active spot available. I like to set that limit at eight for a standard 10 starter, three bench type situation. The larger bench that you have in comparison to your starters in your fantasy squad, then that quality game number would drop for you because again, you just have fewer active spots available. So if we look at the Portland Trailblazers, all four of their games this week come on low volume days. The same goes for the Phoenix Sun. So there is quite a bit of streaming value there. Aaron Baines in Phoenix. You could look at McCall Bridges or Cam Johnson. They could be available to, to you as options there as well. Maybe it's Frank the Tank Kaminsky. God, I hope it's not, but maybe it is Frank the Tank Kaminsky that you'd look at. For Portland, maybe it's Kent Bazemore that we look at. Anthony Simons could be a stream option. Scal Levisier is getting some extra minutes at the moment. So there are a few extra options there with those teams who could have availability on those stream type uh, quality game days. Now, in terms of maximizing our benefit from the schedule for this week, we need to look at where we can attack the back-to-backs. And unfortunately, the way the week begins, there are no back-to-backs on Monday, Tuesday, which is a great stream days for us. There is no back-to-back on Tuesday, Wednesday. So we are really looking in trouble in terms of trying to maximize our days there. Now, Thursday is that nine gamer. That gets a little bit harder for us to deal with because you you might not have an active roster spot there. Friday with its six games, well, that's going to have value for us. So what we're looking at here is more pseudo back-to-back. So teams that play the uh, the Wednesday-Friday combination and then the Friday-Sunday combination. And there are lots of those teams. In fact, you know, the Blazers, they have that double pseudo back-to-back. They play Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Yeah, that's great value. You look at the Miami Heat, they have the Friday-Sunday back-to-back. Uh, you look at the for the Phoenix Suns, they have the triple pseudo as well, which is a, a phrase I'll probably never get to use again. And the New York Knicks also have that triple pseudo. Again, I was lying. 
Uh, so there's some some value in those guys to add a player on Wednesday and then get three games worth of value out of your Knicks, out of your Blazers, and out of your Suns players. In terms of that Wednesday, uh, Wednesday Friday combination, the Orlando Magic also have that pseudo back to back, as do the Washington Wizards and the LA Lakers. They all have that Wednesday Friday combination. So there's quite a bit of stream value for guys, uh, for guys there in that group of of players. Markel Fultz, DJ Augustin, Terrence Ross from uh, from Orlando, from Washington. God knows who's actually going to be healthy and available, but it might be Ish Smith, it might be Isaiah Thomas, maybe it's the big mitten Gary Payton, uh, maybe it's Troy Brown who's available for you to. Stream there and then we look at the um at the friday sunday combination i've already mentioned portland's got that miami's got that as well the spur dunk robinson tyler hero could be a stream in that option myers leonard kelly Olinick, potentially probably Olinick over um over uh leonard there uh, derrick jones jr is an option there in that situation as well Phoenix has that Friday-Saturday combination as well. Then we go down to the Knicks as the only other team who has that back-to-back or pseudo back-to-back across the weekend. So in terms of targeting streams, we're not able to get those bonuses at the beginning of the week. We've got to look at Wednesday-Friday and Friday-Sunday as our combinations. And Portland and Phoenix guys and uh, and Knicks guys are going to be target options because of their three games in those final five days and all three of those games coming on the low volume days. Now I talk about this all the time. If you this is all for daily changes leagues. If you're in a weekly changes leagues, you're looking more for games played rather than where they what day they play on. Again, a, a team with four games like the Cavs is much better for a weekly changes league than it is in a daily changes league where the Cavs have four games but only two quality ones, whereas a streamer for the Lakers in a daily changes where they have three quality, that's better than a Cavs guy because you can use them three times versus two times for the Cavs. But in a weekly, then that Cavs guy, all things being equal, is going to be better than the Lakers. That is a key difference to understand what your league is, whether it's daily changes or weekly changes, and understand how that evolves or what it means for the players that you're looking to add. Now, if we want to look at players who could potentially be guys that you would usually start in a league uh, and might be sit options, we look at the teams that play those two games. So you've got your studs, your Joel Embiid's a start, uh, Drew Holiday, Brandon Ingram, they're all starts, Jim Harden's a start. But then you get into a little bit more of uh, gray areas, like Clint Capella, not sure. Depends on how strong your roster is. Russell Westbrook, he probably is going to be a start, but maybe not with only two games. Ben Simmons in the same boat to Westbrook. It depends on how your team looks and how strong it is, but he might not quite be in your best group of guys. Derek Favors, Tobias Harris, Josh Richardson, Al Horford, all those guys are going to be players for this week that you sit. So while they're great long-term options, they're not going to be weekly league players because of the two games. And the, and the Pelicans have a, a, the absolute shittest schedule. They don't play until Friday, and then they have a Friday-Saturday back-to-back. So those fringe guys, like Alonzo Ball, perhaps, you, if you added him, when you have to wait until Friday to play him, and then you don't even get that action on Saturday, most likely, because your roster, uh, had, well, there's 11 games on that day. The same might even go for Derek Favor. So it, it might be rough if you have those guys on your team or if your team is led by a hard and or an Embiid, you're just going to get minimal playing out of those players. A, a really weird schedule. That Pelicans one, especially, is significantly odd given the fact they don't play again until Friday uh, j- during the week. That's a, that's a really strange schedule there for New Orleans. In terms of looking at potential stream options for weekly leagues, guys that you could add, and they might actually be start options. We look at Goran Dragic of the Miami Heat, Terrence Ross and DJ Augustin of the Orlando Magic, Ivica Zubats of the LA Clippers, Kevin Porter Jr. of Cleveland, Bruce Brown, the Shark of the Pistons, Nemanja Bjelica, depending on the status of Marvin Bagley, uh, Damo Lee, and the little dog Glenn Robinson of the Warriors. These are all players who have the uh, the four or three games in some cases that might actually be worthwhile looking at for this week. And they could be available in your league, but you could actually add them and start them in a lot of cases for this upcoming week. Lee, in particular, is an interesting one. He's been playing so, so well. And the rumors or the whispers that you're hearing from Golden State is they're going to make every move they possibly can, and it's going to happen, to get him onto the roster. And I think he'll remain in uh, in a starter's role or starter-type minute load for a big chunk of this season. It has to happen yet. They have to trade someone. Maybe it's Alec Burks getting traded away. Uh, maybe it's a waving of Marquise Chris. Maybe it's another sort of trade. But I think they're going to be doing everything they can to get Damian Lee in to be a guy that can stick on this roster for the rest of the season. He has been really, really strong for them, and they're riding a wave of a three or four-game win streak at the moment as well. 
So lots of interesting stuff there happening with the Golden State Warriors. If we look at just some other players who might be worth looking at in, in terms of ads who could be available for this uh, for this coming week. Um, the, the Wizards one's interesting. We don't know when Rui Hachimura, Tom Bryant, or Mo Wagner's coming back, but depending on how that staggers, then Wagner could be an option, depending if he comes back before those guys. Royce O'Neal might have some value this week with Conley likely out again, so he could be someone that we look at. Danny House, even though the two games make, makes it a little bit rough for him. Uh, Baysmore already talked about it as a good option as well with his uh, schedule, and, and the Cavs with Kevin Porter Jr. makes a, a nice ad for this week. That'll do it for me for today's um weekly preview i'll be back tomorrow with a waiver wire show and then back straight into sunday's recap show subscribe and you'll never miss an episode apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, stitcher spotify youtube give me a thumbs up leave a comment leave a five star review as well guys we are done here thank you so much for listening everyone see ya